So having a look at my world here, I've created a location. Actually, I created all of these locations. Um, Hanek, which is which is the the base town where everyone starts from, and then the wilderness near Hanek, which would be just sort of the outskirts, and that's where people step into when they leave the village for the first time. Um, I don't have a lot created here, but the basics are around anyway. So I'm going to drill into my Hanak village. I have a little image here, um, which I just found in uh, Google Images, and I, I pasted the URL in here so that people can have something to look at. I describe the town here so that my players know what's going on. Also, the players are able to see um, the other locations which are which are located inside of Hanak. So there's a housing district, and then there's a weapons and armor shop. If I, let's say, go into the weapons and armor shop, there's another little image for everyone to see, which is nice. I've created a shopkeeper NPC, and I have a bunch of items. So people are able to browse the shop, and all I have to do is drop them into the shop. So I move them to that to a different location. As the GM, I can I have control over where they go, and um, they can browse through and see what everything is. So they'd be able to click on the staff, let's say, and they can see everything about it from its value to how much damage it can do and its durability and so on. Um, any other special features and uh, and its description is viewable as well. And these images that you see here are actually provided by our, my RPG, so um, all that is made available to the GMs. Um, now looking at the NPC that I've created here, and there he is, um, I've filled out a few parameters for him. I gave him some hit points, um, uh, his hit points plus his max hit points. Um, and I'll show you how to create this kind of parameter, and uh, as well as his AC, his the amount of gold he has on him, and the max amount of experience he's worth if he's killed. Uh, he also happens to have a short sword on him. Um, so, now, GM, uh, just a little note here, um, game masters sometimes would like to play characters in their own game. and the best way for a GM to do that, rather than creating another account and joining up to their own game, they can actually create an NPC, just make sure they have all the parameters that that a, a character would have, and they would just play that NPC. And because NPCs really, <clears throat> they have everything that a character can have, um, the only difference really is what they're called, and also they, ha they can have an image right now, characters can't, don't have an avatar. Um, so yeah, and browsing out, going to the housing district, I've just, you know, created a couple more locations and set some things up, to describe them. Even though my players haven't been here yet, um, they're available for them to see. And I just, again, went on, like, Google and images and how to look for some, you know, nice paintings and put them up to see if, and, uh, whatever looked appropriate. So that's my town. Um, going out to, going to my game route and going into the wilderness, let's say. A couple other nice images. This is where my characters are right now. It looks like they're going to be up against some of these um, these wolves. Um, if I were to browse into um, some of the other locations I have, um, I have a bunch of other stuff set up, and I have it all set up ahead of time. I, I know where my campaign is going and what, what they're all going to be able to do. Um, so all I have to do is um, locate them there and progress the story by talking to them and um, they choose what they want to do there may be traps um, I've already set up chests with with items inside of them um, putting them in various places so everything's all set and ready to go and you know when there's a downtime and your players aren't available you can just go ahead and create some more more parts of your world really what you're doing is you're creating a whole universe a game universe um, and all of it is in a sort of a forum, sort of a, a um, play-by-post kind of way. Now I'm going to be showing you a couple other tabs, um, starting with the item types. So, I showed you a couple of items that were available, um, let's say in the shop, for example. Uh, in order to create these items, I need to create an item type first. So, basically what it is, is the sort of starting... Um, Point. So if I want to create a new item type, let's say I'm gonna, I'll create one right now. In fact, I'm gonna create a new. Um, I'm gonna create a hunting bow. So 
All I need to do is find an image out of the list that uh, I think would be suitable. Let's try this one. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, I'll put a description later. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to accept this. Now you can see, as soon as I've uh, created my, my new uh, item type, I'm able to set some default parameters for it. Now, if any of these parameters here are left blank, as in they don't have anything, a zero or, any, or a space or anything in them, uh, they won't be available to be changed. So let's say if I wanted to make this item stackable, where you can have a whole bunch of them and they're all going to be exactly the same and everything, what I would do is I would put a zero or a one in the quantity for default. And then once I create the item, I'm able to change it and, uh, and so then set it to like 20 or 30. But uh, since I don't care about this, this is a unique sort of an item that uh, isn't to be created or that won't be stackable, I will, I'll be leaving this blank. So I'm going to want to put my damage in. Um, let's say something like this. Uh, hunting bows wouldn't affect a player's armor class. Um, and then we have gold value here. Let's say it's pretty good. Um, and let's say it's uh, 45 gold. Um, <coughs> the only other thing would be the maybe durability. Now, if you have a print... Um, if you have a linked parameter like this, like I have durability here, if you set the first parameter and leave the second one blank as in the maximum, it will automatically be set to whatever the first parameter is. And that includes if it is um, a random, or not a random, but a, a, a dice formula. You can, you can actually put dice formulas inside of parameters so that they're generated randomly as soon as you create them. So this one here it would be random, let's say, um, Let's say durability is uh, 100 plus, you know, 1d20 or something like that. So what it would do is basically the durability for this type of item every time it's create a new one is created will be random between 101 to 120, and then this would be filled out appropriately depending on whatever this one is, but only if it's left blank. If you actually set this one to 300 it will always be 300 and it won't be set to the, whatever the first one was. There we go, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my list and there's my hunting bow. And there's the durability and when I create this one new then um, the maximum durability will be set to whatever the result of this of this was.